All right, everyone, welcome back. So today we've got another game. So this one was sent in by Oh No No, and uh, he was playing as the black pieces in this game, and he was playing against the Magnus Carlsen app set to 15. Okay, and uh, he's a pretty strong player. He's rated 2005, so that's pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at this game. And remember, he is the black pieces, and Magnus Carlsen is the white pieces. All right, so first move, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, okay, d4, so Magnus is going to play the scotch. Okay, knight takes. And I typically don't like to play the scotch as white because I feel like if you play against a prepared enough opponent, it's, it's kind of difficult to really get a good advantage against because uh, there's a lot of different variations to be careful of. So, so in the game, knight f6, but uh, just to show a couple ideas, so the reason why I don't like to play the scotch is because of these, these two versions that can happen. So you can either do bishop to b4 and then I think it's kind of a strange thing for white to play against because it's like what what are you gonna do do you really wanna play this and then knight c3 and accept the pin and then knight f6 and then and then it already doesn't look like white's really getting much I, I think I think that's you know you don't wanna walk into that and then also if c3, then where are you putting your knight? Because c3 is usually where the knight goes. So, so those are some things. And then also, bishop, bishop d2, then queen e7. And uh, already, I feel like this is this is kind of strange for white to play against. And so that's one of the main variations. And you have to be ready for that. And you also have to be ready for bishop to c5. And th there's tons of options for for a black. Okay, and and like say say knight takes, then queen f6, and you're already threatening a mate in one out of the opening. And so if, if black, you know, once you he can have a number of different options. And in this game, he chose knight to f6. Okay, knight c6, and b takes. So downside of this is sometimes this a pawn can become weak in end games. And on the few occasions I have played the scotch, I usually work that into my, my game plan, that this pawn can sometimes be a target. Okay, e5. Queen e7. So, this pawn was attacking the knight. Instead of moving it, the pin. Okay, queen e2. Knight d5. c4. And again, instead of moving, he pins. So this is good. See, instead of retreating, he's attacking to develop. So, so when you can, you know, develop while preventing threats and things like that, you usually should. B3, G6, because uh, usually you don't want to just be reacting to your opponent. Usually you want to be making your own threats and developing your pieces instead of just moving the same pieces over and over again. Bishop B2, Bishop G7. Knight d2, knight b4. Okay. Now knight to f3 because, you know, this fork is threatened here. So white develops the knight out to f3, which is better than d2, and prevents the knight from going to c4. Alright, c5. g3. Castle. Bishop g2. d5. Okay, yeah, yeah, hitting the center. That's good because black's already castled, so hitting back in the center. Okay. Castling kingside. Rook a, b8. So now, trying to get all the pieces into the game. So, notice that blacks, for the most part, move different pieces whenever possible. Trying to get all of them into the game. And now you got this rook setting up, you know, potentials against this bishop, maybe. And also this file is semi-open. So, yeah, good place for that rook. Rook at b1. 
Punk FD8. 91. D takes C, B takes C. Yeah, now this pawn is a little bit sensitive. And also, now, now the pawn is out of the way, so there's even more of this danger going on. Alright, queen to e6, yeah, doubling up on that pawn. Rook takes, rook takes, rook c1. Alright, yeah, to defend, rook c1 probably isn't the best choice, because cause then, you know, knight can just take on a2. Uh, if you want to try to hold, probably bishop to f1 can hold the pawn a little bit better. Because then you're not losing the a pawn. Also, this rook can become slightly awkward. So, like rook c2, knight b4, rook gets attacked again. And then rook c1, bishop h6, so you see it's kind of awkwardly places getting hit a lot. And in addition, you can't really put this rook on a square like c3. Because if c3, then, then rook d2. Wait, hold on, no. No, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. After bishop h6, you can't defend. Oh, accidentally went backwards, yeah. After bishop h6, you can't play, because then the rook comes down to d2. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, okay. Bishop h6, f4, yeah. And uh, f4, now this king is slightly weaker here. As he's a little bit more exposed than he was before. Okay, here's kind of a creative idea by black. G5. Usually you don't see this. You don't see a king playing out his own pawns. And also temporarily blocking his own bishop. Okay, queen f2. Queen f5. Bishop c3. All right, and here is an example of how people could become greedy. So, so notice some people may have noticed this pawn is hanging. Well, if you just take, then some bad things can happen. You get greedy and you say, oh, well, I'm attacking the knight, I grabbed a pawn. That should be good. Well, g takes, and then say you do go for the knight. F takes g. And then, then you got some dangers coming down. You got this, you got this, you got this. There's a lot of threats to consider. So say something like, uh, yeah, like, uh, let's say you just, say so you just move the rook out of the way. Then, you know, queen f2, king h1, rook d2. And then this doesn't look so pleasant. All right. So G takes on F4. Rook A1 is played. Bishop C8. And now Queen takes C5. But now it's kind of a questionable position for, for White. Like, there's not a whole lot of good options here because there's some pressures that are becoming apparent here. Like, there's this pawn right here. It's, you know, putting some tension. And, uh, you know, there's, there's some things to worry about. But, uh, taking. And so Jack is trying to get a pawn for some of these, these tensions that are coming in. Okay. And F3. That's the only thing that's bad about taking those. F3 isn't so pleasant. And after takes, 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 queen d3. And now, now we have a case where there's two bishops. This bishop can come on this diagonal here, and then it's got a very, very pleasant line of sight to right in front of the white king. And then also this bishop is going to play some important parts in attacking as well. So there's some very, very big dangers that are coming in for white. And in this open center, the two bishops are going to push around this knight and bishop very easily. Okay, bishop e1, not so great. Bishop e7, and now... Now we're seeing that long diagonal. Queen f2, queen to e4. And now, now we got this battery on this very weak diagonal. Queen f1, bishop to e3. Yeah, so here are some tricky variations that I wonder, I wonder if he actually saw all of these variations. So that's, 
impressive, but there's some some tricky things. So so say knight or let's let's actually start with yeah, let's start with knight takes. Cause say knight takes then queen h1, king f2, queen f3, king g1, and you already have a perpetual. So that's that's the worst case is you could just keep going back and forth. But I think in this position you could do better. So so queen takes e3. So queen f2. Queen e1, you're threatening checkmate. So he has to stop that. King f1. Rook d3, and now now there's some some danger here. So there's no real clear way to to stop that. If queen e2, then there's a checkmate in two. And if, if queen g1, rook f3 check. And yeah, this is uh, this isn't going so well either, because you're you're losing some things. Yeah. And I think that back here there's also king to h1. So here's the one, the last variation. This was the one that was actually played. Okay. Then queen c2, h3, because uh, there's not really a whole lot that white can do. He's under a lot of pressures here. Queen b2, and this is this is to get this rook off of this to move somewhere over here so that it's no longer guarding the back row. So that way after the rook moves, then you get your other rook into the attack. Now these some pretty big threats here. Rook d5, so it gives up the exchange. And and the thing is, is even if you take with the, the rook, you could even just take with the rook and just win the pawn, and then you still have these two wonderful bishops on these diagonals. So that's one thing I, I actually was even thinking about. Like, what if you just exchange off the rook and won the pawn? Then you're still doing very well. Because not only did you win the pawn, but also the bishop is still pinning this knight and still on the long diagonal. So it's still very good. But but winning the exchange works too, because there's also this this little number here. Queen to f2. And then if, if queen takes... Okay, so queen takes happens in the game. The other variation is, even if the bishop takes, you can take with check, then after the king moves, you're still winding up a minor piece. Or no, major piece, because you're up the rook. Okay. Queen takes on f2. Bishop takes. This bishop is pinned. King moves to h2. And bishop takes on e1. So that's a nice little ending tactic there to win, win an extra piece. Alright, and then at this point, white really can't do anything, because if you can get to an ending where you're just up a piece like this and there's still pawns left, then it's pretty much over. All you really have to do is just keep playing. And then a few more moves in here, and I think right after rook to d3, this is where the game ends. Alright, so yeah, some very good play by black here. Yeah, so... So yeah, he kept up the pressure, he got the two bishops, which was a big advantage, and uh, yeah, kept putting pressure on the white king. And one other thing that, uh, that I really want to point out here, some of the games that I've been looking over, they're players that were like rushing in, just uh, going too quickly. But if you look in this game, if you go through it, there's no real real immediate quick thing that, that Black did to try to win, he kind of just took his time. So somewhere in here like he just tried to create weaknesses like like on this pawn and then later on he played he played like g5 to try to weaken these kingside pawns so just kept making small weaknesses in his opponent's position and gaining small advantages like weak pawns bishop pair the end and uh, just kept improving his pieces. No real immediate rush in for a win, but just took his time and slowly beat his opponent. All right, so yeah, great game. Thanks for sending this one in. And uh, yeah, so everyone definitely keep sending me in your games. I like making these videos. I like to be able to help people to play. So keep sending me in these games, everyone. Thanks.